Hey everybody, this is Ross. In today's video, we're gonna cover a number of different topics. We're gonna be all over the place, so stick with me till the end of this video, because we're gonna first, we're gonna talk about some summer pruning on my pears, my apples, my stone fruits. These behind me are my cherries. We're gonna do a, a little bit of a demo on that, and then we're gonna show you guys the pomegranates. We have our potted pomegranate trees that have been in pots now for like four or five years, and those are now flowering. It's, it's early June here in the Philadelphia area. And then last thing I'm gonna take you guys over to the corner of the yard where we're gonna do some more summer pruning on an espalier plum that I have that's quite young. We're gonna clean that up, get it back to its espalier form. And then we're also gonna do some chop and drop at the very end um, to chop and drop some comfrey underneath my pawpaw trees to give them a little bit of food. So the first thing here is the, uh, the summer pruning of these cherry trees. These are, you know, my Bing type cherries. And you can tell they've really grown quite a bit. There's a lot of leaves, there's a lot of growth here. On a lot of these branches, you're looking at maybe two feet, a foot and a half in length. And I'm gonna take these foot and a half long branches across the board here, I'm gonna cut them basically in half. And that's, maybe you might think a bit extreme, but I'm really coming back with this growth here all over this tree because I don't want these trees to get too out of control. Um, additionally, what's really nice right now is that the trees are fruiting. They're turning color right now. You'll see it on this, this white gold cherry. It's got some red blush to it. Uh, this one ripens before the black gold right next to it. And this particular tree, uh, you know, you have to net these cherry trees. Otherwise, the birds are going to get all the cherries. I can't net these trees if they have all this lanky growth every single year. It just really causes an issue. And if you put the net over top of it, a bird netting as an example, that's what I'm talking about, um, the, the trees are just gonna grow right through the netting because there's bigger holes in bird netting. It's not insect netting. Insect netting has smaller holes. And if I had some insect netting, I throw it over top of this and it wouldn't necessarily matter because not only do they, do they grow right through the netting, but they also, um, when you take off the net, it's difficult to get the net off and you end up losing a lot of the leaves anyway. So what I'm doing right now is a huge effort into summer pruning to control the size, not just the size. What else are we doing? We're getting an, an increased fruit set for next year. And so we're gonna have more fruit set next year by doing this consistently if we do this throughout the year, especially. Uh, but this first summer pruning really goes a long way into the shape, the vigor, the size of the tree. And you really should be doing this from the beginning, even with your very young trees. You just keep going across the board here. There's really no method to this. There's no science to this. You just basically come in here and cut all these branches back um, really about halfway. Like I said, they're about a foot and a half long. I'm cutting them half, half of that back. And I'm just coming here across, making a judgment call as to how much growth I wanna take out. Maybe I wanna take out more growth towards the top, a little bit less towards the bottom. You know, we're also going to have an easier ability to net these trees because there's less growth, it's not as big, I need a smaller net, right? So that's what I'm doing, all the way across this. It's so, so simple. I do this on all my trees now, rather than doing winter pruning, because winter pruning really just encourages um, your trees to actually grow the following year, and that's not what we want as backyard growers. We wanna keep these things small and healthy. I don't think you guys can even see me right now, but I'm on the other side of the tree just doing this simple simple process and uh, I think you guys get the point right so we're gonna call it a day on this I'll show you guys now the pomegranates and uh, the pomegranates like I said have been with me for a number of years at this point um, I can't even keep track and I've had a number of trees now that have flowered for me you can see them over here in the corner there's a fig in the way um, it's tough to get back in there, but there is a, a tree back there called Sumbar, which has flowered, or is flowering now. And it's one of the earliest pomegranates you can grow. And I thought that's probably the best one, or one of the best ones that you can grow here. It's not only early, but it's very soft seeded. 
and I hope to get to try it this year. Uh, I've had some trees flower actually last year. Here's the pomegranates by the way. And I've had the trees flower last year, but unfortunately they just did not um, set their fruits. And it's really quite a shame, but it's really the reality and I don't know why. And it's been, it's been like this now for two years and I thought maybe they're just not getting pollinated all that well. And maybe these guys need to be hand pollinated. So I hand pollinated them last year and we didn't have any, any success. Maybe I did it wrong. I don't know, but these trees are very vigorous now. They're very healthy. I've been feeding them well. I've been watering them well. The difference between last year's and other years is that I didn't give them a greenhouse head start. I usually have them in the greenhouse, wake them up quite early, because they're a fall fruit, right? And they don't like water uh, when the fruits are ripening. Our fall is very humid and very wet. So uh, if I have them ripening then, you're gonna have split and cracked pomegranates. And that's not good. So I thought, you know, let's give them a head start like I do some of the fig trees, but they don't like this. They really don't. Um, they don't like that greenhouse head start. So they leaf out very quickly and they need a lot more water early in the season. Um, and they inevitably end up every year, some of them just defoliate and have to restart and it kind of sets them back. So some of these trees really haven't had a fair shot at fruiting and flowering. But uh, we have flowers right down here also on this variety. And I think about maybe three of these are now flowering. If I can find the tag on this guy, I'll let you guys know the variety name. I'm not seeing it right now. Um, but I'm sure this one's probably somewhat early as well. And that's why you're seeing as an example, some bar has a number of flowers. It's covered in flowers actually. I'm looking at it from this angle. And I'll bring you in real close to show you the flowers. What you end up doing is you have some male flowers, you have some female flowers, and whatever it is that pollinates these things is supposed to go into the male and female flowers. You know what I mean? There's the beginning right there of a flower, a red <clears throat> pomegranate flower. And a number of them will probably leaf out and uh, flower from this point here. They're, some of them will flower a bit earlier than others. And they have like a stagger, staggered flowering process. And that just kind of keeps them, I guess, I don't know, getting access to better pollination. You would think having, you know, 10 different trees there, there is, there's about 10 different pomegranates that I would have no issues with pollination, but I think there's probably some insect in the area that doesn't really, uh, or there's not that insect in the area that doesn't pollinate them for me. And it's a bit of a shame. So maybe somehow I can encourage that insect to come and visit my yard. I really don't know, but what we're gonna do right now is actually look at my plumus baies that I just planted uh, last year. We planted them basically as single stem whips. And I came in here as I was pruning, doing my summer pruning. We did the one over here on the left. We got this one all cleaned up and looking nice. We took a lot of uh, branches out. We topped the tree for the most part. You know, doing your summer pruning to keep these, these branches here from getting too big and too vigorous. So that was good, right? I guess we could finish this off over here in a little bit. But this tree still doesn't have that form just yet. We're still missing a branch to actually be tied down to this wire, which is gonna be this branch right here. We do want it to get to a longer size. I could also select a different branch if I wanted and then tie it down that way. So in the meantime, I'm gonna keep letting this thing grow a bit vigorously, a bit taller. We're gonna to top some of this back here. And uh, this is then gonna grow, and once it gets to that right height, you can see it's still missing a little bit of length to get to the end of the wire. Then we'll tie it down, and then our tree will get to that final form. But in the meantime, we just have some growth in here that could get uh, cleaned up a bit. This is pretty much unnecessary. You know, pretty much just getting back our form here on the espalier. That's really all it is, is cleaning up this main trunk. 
increasing the airflow in here. Um, some of this really vigorous stuff here, I could leave this if I want, or I could top it. Maybe I'll come in here and take about half of that out. Top some of these other branches here coming off the main cordon on the bottom tier. And uh, that's sort of it. Now we got our tree basically looking nice. Did a little bit of summer pruning, a little bit of thinning it out. We don't want to thin it out a little bit too much, but we do want to make sure that we're getting these trees kept under control because I don't want them to get too big too soon. And uh, we're also going to encourage hopefully some fruit set next year. I actually have some plums forming on this guy. There's about four or five, six, maybe seven or eight plums actually. Maybe nine plums on this particular tree, which is a nice little surprise and that's always uh, a little bit of encouragement, but you know, not always necessary. We're trying to do this a bit slower. We don't need to have the biggest tree uh, in the yard. We don't need to have the biggest tree in the neighborhood. We don't need to have them grow extremely quickly and put out a ton of fruit um, all the time. You know, this is a nice little balancing act. The summer pruning is just unbelievably beneficial that I've realized. And most of my pruning now, like I said, is gonna happen in the summer rather than in the fall. So I've got myself a hoary hoary here, guys. And you can see this comfrey here, which really gets out of control. It's beautiful though, I love it. But I'm gonna chop it down a bit here with the hoary hoary. And this is gonna go just pretty much directly underneath the pawpaw trees. And I could as well put them underneath my plums as this form of chop and drop. Now this comfrey is so nice because it will break down very, very quickly. And I find that the hori hori is like literally the best tool to cut this stuff. It takes two seconds, look at that. Um, I do wanna leave some of this for the bees. I don't wanna cut all of this out because it is flowering. However, this stuff comes back so quickly that really should have no problem worrying about bees here. But it's nice to have this, this stuff here underneath something like the pawpaw, which is gonna provide the tree or whatever it is that you, you want to grow quicker or you want it to be healthier, to give those particular trees all this organic material. That's just never ending. The pawpaw, or the, uh, the comfrey is so vigorous. It's so beautiful. It just keeps coming back. You keep cutting it, it's wonderful. Um, and to have something like this for something like the pawpaw, which really needs a lot of time, a lot of years to grow, I think this has really aided my trees over the years. Um, and has made them stronger, healthier trees because of it. So I just lay that really just right underneath the tree. Put this around the back. This stuff breaks down so quickly, gives them a nice shot of fertilizer pretty early in the season, or pretty quickly I should say. And then I'm gonna take the rest of this throw it under a tree that needs it. Maybe my other Espaillé plum over here. And now we're feeding our trees. Honestly, one of the better ways that you can. Um, yeah, so it's kind of about these support species of trees, whatever that is for you. Maybe it's a type of grass. Uh, maybe it's something that grows very easily, very vigorously that you can cut a lot of times throughout the season. Whatever that is, I suggest planting it because that's your source of fertilizer that's sustainable and actually will give your trees a huge benefit uh, for them getting established. So thank you guys here for watching this one. I hope you guys got to the end. We did a lot today. Uh, still gonna do some more summer pruning here and making sure we're topping off some of these trees because they are getting a, a bit too big. Maybe I'll even do some on the, uh, the kiwi vine right there. You never know. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys here for watching this one. If you enjoyed it, please follow the channel, subscribe, and check out our blog, figboss.com. We'll see everybody soon. Take care.